at my beautiful baby grand piano, I thought for this lesson, I would go to the piano. I know we've been working on the keyboard. So I'm so excited that we are already at lesson four. I want to say how proud I am of you because so many people don't get to this point, right? They kind of have this idea, oh, it would be nice to learn piano or I've always wanted to learn piano. But then it's the actual carrying it out, carrying it through. And you know, that is such a sign when you begin to carry things through. It really is evidence of the whole um, research that's done with the brain and learning piano because part of not carrying things through is not having that focus that comes with better brain health, that comes with increased brain plasticity. So the very fact that you're here is evidence that it's beginning to work for you. Now, obviously, we've just started. We've only just begun. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. But I do wanna just say, way to go. And, and the thing that will make a difference for you, as I've talked about, is practicing, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about that later too. But I wanna review, first of all, what we've done to date to show how much you've already learned in just three lessons. So we started with the C scale, which is your basic scale. And from there, we moved on to the G scale and the F scale. And not only did we do the scales, we did the chords, we did the arpeggios. We also learned the fingering of both right hand and left hand. to play together right now some of you might be saying well I haven't gotten all that yet and <laughs> and that's totally normal because you know you're learning a new skill it's like it's like remember when you didn't know how to ride a bike as a kid and you got on that bike and at first you were falling a little bit and you didn't know what balance felt like and then all of a sudden you got it and it got easier and easier the more you went out, the more you practiced, right? That's true of anything. And it's especially true in learning the piano. So if you're challenged a little bit, you're having some struggles maybe with the F scale, okay, in the finger. Just keep practicing because the more you practice, what begins to happen is your brain is connecting on that level. It's also connecting down in the memory of your fingers and your fingers are going to have it's their own memory after a while. You're not even gonna think about it anymore. It will be so natural to you. So don't worry if you're a little frustrated with yourself, it's okay. Everybody learns at a different pace. And the wonderful thing about these videos, you can hit replay and do it again. So I'm excited about that for you. Now, as I mentioned, obviously, we're not gonna be able to learn everything in four lessons. I'm gonna be teaching you another scale today. I'm excited about that. but. You're not, we've only just begun. I mean, let's face it. There's so much more to talk about and to learn with the piano. I mean, not only are there <clears throat> different chords and scales that we haven't even covered or touched yet, many of them, but there's reading music. There's learning how to read notes. There's learning how to use your pedals here. There's learning all the different variations of chords that I'll talk about a little at the end here, but there's so many ways that you can bring forth different sounds in the piano. And so we've just begun and that's okay, but there's more to come. So I want you to kind of keep that in the back of your mind because at the end of the lesson, I'm gonna talk about ways that you can, you and I can stay connected and what that's gonna to do to increase your brain health because as I mentioned, and as you've probably read in several of the PDFs that I've sent to you, the longer you play, the research shows, the longer you have, I mean, the more developed your brain gets and the longer the results last, right? And so if you've even played for seven, nine months, as one of the studies show, that 
those results lasted even longer, even when the people stopped playing, okay? But you're not gonna get those same results in seven to nine days as you are in seven to nine months. So that's what I want to encourage you with as we continue on together. So here we are, and as I mentioned, we just went over everything. We've also, by the way, learned two songs that went with those chords. Yay! And you have everything on your PDFs, as I mentioned. I highly recommend that you print your PDFs and put them at your keyboard stand, at the piano here, so that you can follow along a lot easier. Um, so with that, we are going to go right into uh, another scale that is so easy and one of my favorites. It's A minor. And um, I've, I'll show it to you here real quickly. We're going to start on the A. By the way, how do we know where A is? Well, an easy way is here's middle C. And if we go down, C, B, A. Another way we know where A is, is in anywhere on our three black notes, A is gonna be right above the second black note. Here's another one, right? As we talked about, there's a low A. So if we start on A, A minor is very much like C major. Remember I mentioned a couple videos back that they're like sister chords because there's no sharps or flats. So, uh, again, in the A minor scale, you have no sharps or flats. You begin on A and you go up the scale, B, C, D, begin to pick up a little bit is the minor scales have a different um, structure than the major scales. Remember I gave you the whole step, whole half steps, that whole structure for the major scales. In your minor scales, what gives it that really cool sound is that it has a different structure to it. So in other words, here we're starting on A, we go a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step. And that's different than your major, which, ha which gives it that different sound, right? But the cool thing about that is that particular scale structure, every time you do that, you will have a minor scale, no matter where you start on any particular note. If I start on C minor, can change the sound too with our scales in that way. That's part of our later lessons that we'll be learning if you stick with me. But in any case, for the A minor, we're gonna work it together now for our, for left hand and right hand, left brain, right brain connectivity going up the scale. We'll do our arpeggios, as we learned also, which are the chords played out. We start on one, three, five. One, three, five. One, five, three, five. And our chord played together is very simple. One, three, five. A minor scale, what's so great about this uh, chord is that it goes so well with the ones I've already taught you, C, F, G, A minor. They just are a beautiful sound together. In fact, 
I've written several songs um, with this particular chord structure. Some of you might be aware of the title track of one of my albums, Songbird. And that particular song begins with the C arpeggios. arpeggios together, these chords together, they make a beautiful sound that just flows amazing. And that's what I'm excited about for you as you're learning. So now I want to cover a song that I know that a lot of you know, probably all of you know by the Beatles. It incorporates all the chords that we've learned so far. By the way, let me remind you uh, you know, I really want to encourage you to review the songs that we've learned to date because the more you practice your chords into applying them into things that you know and you begin to associate with, it's, it's going to be more fun for you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to connect even better, right? So as we started with the Hallelujah. Don't worry, nobody will be there but you. You can just have a great time and, and uh, do that. But that's going to also be a way where you're connecting the what you're learning to what you know. And, this, and it's going to be a, a great way to make that uh, match together for your brain health and also for just becoming more familiar with the chords in that way. So as we move on, we're going to finish this lesson with the song Let It Be, as I mentioned, and we're going to begin with the first line, as you can see from your PDF, it starts on the chord of C, and then it goes to a G, and then it goes to the A minor, which we just learned, and then the F. Okay, so if we sing that, I'll just sing it while you're watching my hands so you can know that you're, you know, you're playing the song. So it's, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Moving on to the second line. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. So again, that, that second line is C, G, F, C. Now, if we skip on over right to the chorus, we go right to the A minor. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Again, if you just follow along, you'll on your PDF, you'll see that that in that chorus, it's very simple. It's the A minor, G, F, C. Now, as you begin to practice this more, what you can do is begin to incorporate some of the uh, arpeggios and playing out the chords, as you notice, I'm not, I, some of the chords I play, I play what we call inverted, which I'll be talking about later in my more advanced class. But um, for instance, an F, I'm playing inverted down here or the A minor. You can play, you can play parts of the chords but you can also incorporate what we learned by bringing in a little bit of melodic sound 
after you've practiced just the chords, you might do something like this. together bringing practice enough and practice together the chords the scales the arpeggios um, you know bringing that all together into a beautiful melodic sound well here you are congratulations you just completed your first four piano lessons as a gift from me to you to show you what's possible in the world of opening up this beautiful skill called learning to play the piano and increase your brain health, your cognitive thinking, all the things that we've spoken about over these last four lessons. And you know, it's a rare thing if you've gotten to this point. Uh, a lot of people, most people don't finish what they begin. I've had a lot of uh, students sign up for the first you know four free lessons but very few follow through to the end to this point of what's next and even completing the four lessons that to me is a sign of why uh, our brain health is so important because you know a lot of that comes out of not completing how we do one thing in our life usually reveals how we do everything in our life and so that's the beauty of what I'm offering here to you in not just developing a skill to learn how to play a musical instrument, which is fantastic, but combining it with knowing that you are becoming uh, more aware of the right and left brain activity of bringing things together in a way that's going to impact other areas of your life. So I'm excited for you and I want to give you an opportunity here to continue on with me. I did the research of what an average uh, piano lesson cost in the United States, you know, and obviously in some cities it's going to be a lot more, but the national average for a 30 minute lesson is between 30 and 35 dollars. That also does not include having to drive to a teacher or to a music academy. Uh, your gas, you know, your time with that. Uh, what's exciting about what I'm going to be offering you is just like the first four free lessons, you're going to be getting uh, these sent directly to you and you get to hit the replay button as many times as you need to, uh, which is exciting because that means that you can continue to learn and practice uh, as I'm giving these to you, you know, once a week for the next 10 lessons. In addition, I'm going to be having an, uh, an online opportunity live webinar once a week where you can join in with other students, piano students, to maybe see where some are struggling, things that are uh, really a win for you, and areas where you need improvement and where you can ask questions that maybe somebody else is also having challenges with. So. That is my package for you. And the whole thing is just $300, which is really phenomenal. It's the price of what the national average lesson is, but you're not having to, uh, you know, use your gas to go somewhere. Uh, the most exciting thing also is, like I said, you get to hit that replay button. These are links that you're going to have. Uh, that nobody else will have uh, publicly. You know, the first four I've made public on my YouTube channel, but these will be private links that only my students will receive. So I want to encourage you to uh, click on with the email that I'm attaching with this video, click on the link that will allow you to register for this special deal. I don't know how long I will be offering this special deal uh, because I, I will be increasing the price. So I just encourage you to take advantage of it. I encourage you to share your excitement. Like you, some of you have been writing on my, on my YouTube channel under the lessons, what a blessing this has been for you. I've heard from some of you personally. So continue to let me know. Continue to share this with your friends too because 
what a great opportunity to be able to, you know, feel that victory inside yourself of, of playing the piano, but also sharing that with others. And I know that in these next 10 lessons, you're going to be super, uh, super charged for what we're about to take on. We're going to learn more chords, more scales. We're going to learn how to read notes so much uh, ahead, and it's only going to be more fun and really in the end, uh, just an amazing blessing for your overall being, your, you know, your, your ability to play, your ability to think clearer, and uh, your ability to feel that satisfaction in your heart that you've actually finished something that you began. So way to go. We'll see you soon.